friends and viewer good day fredrik nietzsche one of the greatest philosopher of his time had written many outstanding books the one which today i am going to discuss is the genealogy of morals as nietzsche had written nietzsche had written many outstanding books like the spoke zarathustra behind good and evil and many other remarkable books but the one which i am going to talk about the same is genealogy of morals on the genealogy of moral is made of three essays it is consist of on three essays all of which question and critique the value of our moral judgments based on genealogical method whereby nietzsche examine the origins and meaning of our different moral concept the first essay good and evil good and bad contrast uh, what nietzsche calls master morality and slave morality master morality was developed by the strong healthy and free who saw their own happiness as good and named it thus by contrast they saw those who were weak unhealthy and and enslaved as bad since their weakness was undesirable by contrast the slaves feeling oppressed by these wealthy and happy masters called the masters evil and called themselves good by contrast so the second essay of this book is related to guilt bad conscience and the like deals with surprise guilt bad conscience and the like Nietzsche traces the origin of concept such as guilt and punishment showing that originally they were both were not based on any sense of moral transgression rather guilt simply meant that a debt was owed and punishment was simply a form of securing repayment only with the rise of slave morality did these moral concept gain their present meanings nietzsche identifies bad conscience as our tendency to see ourselves as a sinner and locates its origin in the need that came into the development of society to inhabit our animal instinct for aggression and cruelty and to turn them inward upon ourself and in the third essay what is the meaning of aesthetic ideals confront aestheticisms the powerful and paradoxical force that dominates contemporary life nietzsche sees it as expression of weak sick will unable to cope with its struggle against itself the sick will seize its animal instinct its earthly nature as vile sinful and horrible unable to free itself from these instinct it attempts to subdue and tame itself as much as possible nietzsche concludes that man would rather will nothingness then not will so this is the uh, the short uh, introduction of the genealogy of morals by fredrik nietzsche now let us uh, analyze this term nietzsche is difficult to read because he demands that we overturn or suspend many of our assumption that our very reasoning relies upon he is one of the western traditions deepest thinkers precisely because he calls so much into question if we can come to understand nietzsche's 
a genealogical method, his doctrine of will to power and his perspectivism uh, as all linked, his argument will become much easier to follow. Nietzsche distinction between a thing and its meaning. We find the initial doubt with which Nietzsche unravels so many of our assumption. We are generally tempted to see things as having inherent meaning. For instance, punishment is at once the act of punishing and the reason behind punishment. However, Nietzsche argues these things have different meaning of different times. For instance, the act of punishment has been at times a celebration of one's power, at times an act of cruelty, at times a simple tit for tat. We could not understand a thing and we certainly cannot understand its origin. If we assume that it is always held the same meaning central to Nietzsche's critic than as an attempt at genealogy that will show the winding and undirected route or different moral concept have taken to arrive in present shape. Morality is generally treated as a sacred because we assume, we think that there is some transcendental ground for our morals, be it God, reason, tradition, or something else. Yet contrary to our assumption that good, bad, or evil have always had the same meaning, Nietzsche's genealogical method shows how these terms have evolve, shattering any illusion as to the continuity or absolute truth of our present moral concept. Because they have different, even contradictory meaning over the course of their long lifespans, Nietzsche does not believe that concept or things are fundamental stuff that makes up reality. Instead, he looks beneath these things to see what drives the different meaning that they adopt over time. Hiding beneath, he finds forces and evil, all of existence. Nietzsche assert uh, is a struggle between different wills for the feeling of power. This will to power is most evident on human level, where we see people constantly competing with one another often for one other purpose than to feel superior to those that they overcome. That a thing has a meaning at all means there is some will dominating it. We need it towards a certain interpretation that a thing may have different meaning over time suggests that different wills have come to dominate it. For instance, the concept of good was once dominated by the will of healthy, strong barbarians and at the opposite meaning that does not now that is dominated by the will of weak, sick aesthetics. According to Nietzsche, then a belief in an absolute truth or absolute anything is to give to one particular meaning, one particular interpretation of a thing. It is essentially to allow oneself to be dominated by a particular will. A will that wishes to remain free will shun absolutes all kinds of and try to look at matter from a very different perspective as possible in order to gain its own. This doctrine that has deeply influenced postmodern thought is called perspectivism. Nietzsche inquiries are thus conducted in a very irreverent spirit. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is absolute. Nothing we might even say is true. Our morality is not a set of duties passed down from God, but an arbitrary code that has evolved as randomly as the human species itself. The only constant is that we and everything else are constantly striving for more power, the only constant virtue is a will that is powerful and free from bad conscience, hatred and resentment. Nietzsche's main project in genealogy of morale is to question a value of our morality. 
Ultimately, he argues that our present morality is born out of resentment and hatred that has felt towards anything that was powerful, strong or healthy. As such, he sees our present morality as harmful to the future health and perspective species, while the blonde beast and the barbarians of primitive master morality are animalistic brutes. At least they are strong and healthy. On the other hand, our present aesthetic morality has deepened us by turning our aggressive instinct inward and seeing ourselves as a new wilderness to struggle against. Nietzsche's ideal to maintain a, this depth and yet not be ashamed for our of our animal instinct or of the life that glowed within us. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the analysis and the, 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 the introduction of the book Genealogy of Morals by Friedrich Nietzsche. This is, uh, uh, I hope you will understand and you will enjoy it when you go through the, the basic doctrine of Friedrich Nietzsche. Thank you very much.